Summer League Scotties showing two-way superstar potential, Precious Achua's dunking on everyone, and Malachi Flynn is looking like a legit backup point guard. Combine the Vegas Raptors with OG Ananobi and Gary Trent Jr., and Toronto has five solid under the age of 24 prospects with massive potential. Here's every reason for why the Toronto Raptors' young core is special. Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that percentage, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. We'll get to Barnes, OG, Achua, and the rest, but tipping off at the head of the snake, you have NBA champions Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam. Kyle Lowry missed a lot of last season, so Freddie and Spicy were thrown into the fire as number one scoring options. The two 2016 acquisitions put up around 20 points per game, but their efficiency and leadership, I thought, wasn't completely up to par. That was likely because they were getting accustomed to the role they'd just been forced into. Also, undoubtedly, the biggest piece of adversity faced across the entire league was experienced by the Raps. Throughout the entire seven-month NBA season, the Raptors were displaced from Toronto, forced to leave their families. Whenever the Raptors did allow fans, the majority of them were cheering for the opposing team, given their games were in the US. Memed for being the Tampa Bay Raptors, Overall, Toronto had the opposite of a home court advantage. As the Canadian federal government continued to deny access for opposing teams to cross the border, arenas in the US started opening to full capacity crowds. Blasphemous. Van Vliet and Siakam are both family guys and two players who thrived playing off the crowd at Scotiabank Arena. Not being able to return home for that long definitely impacted their production. The Raptors potentially have the best fan base across the entire league. In 2020-21, there was no Nav Batia, no Drake, no D Flo sitting eight rows up cheering his ass off. The Raps were in bloody Tampa Bay. I love the Devil Rays and all, but the Raptors didn't belong there. Speaking of baseball, the Blue Jays returning to the Rogers Center in Toronto recently likely means the Raptors will be back in the six as well. I'm glad there was a season last year, but the Raptors playing on the other end of the continent made it feel like an alternate universe at times. Some people are saying Scotty Barnes could be the Giannis of the 2020 draft. It could take a few years for his scoring to reach a star caliber level, but the 19 year olds already showing legendary defensive potential. Other than his menacing defense, the best part about Scotty's game is his basketball IQ and passing ability. He lets the game come to him and doesn't force up bad shots like most first year players do. From his entry passes to his bullets in transition, he's capable of hitting anyone on the move. More importantly, the kid's a willing passer and that's been evident with his play in the summer league. Additionally, his seven foot three wingspan not only helps him cover ground defensively, but Barnes can score at a fairly high level by purely using his size and hops. That's not to say Scotty doesn't have weapons in his offensive bag right now. I know I said it may take a few years for his scoring to reach all-star caliber, but with the 10 for 18, 23 point game Barnes just had against the Hornets, where he led Toronto to a comeback win in the fourth quarter, the man has me thinking he'll be less of a project than I initially projected him to be. Barnes hit a nasty pull-up three in the face of Leangelo Ball while scoring with the craftiness of a five-year pro. In terms of his maturity, along with his ball handling and shot creation for his size, he's leaps and bounds ahead of almost any player his age. The number four pick will easily make the all-rookie first team, and don't be shocked if he's a franchise-changing type player for a championship-winning organization. It'll be enticing to keep an eye on Scotty's progression throughout his rookie year. Precious Achua being thrown into the Lowry trade was a complete steal for Toronto. The Raptors get a 225 pound center with a seven foot two wingspan, nine foot standing reach and powerful athleticism. A diamond in the rough in the 2020 NBA draft, Precious was teammates with James Wiseman in college. Wiseman, however, was suspended for recruiting inducements his family received, and James decided not to return after his suspension, making Achua the main option for the Tigers. In his lone year at Memphis, Achua averaged 16 points, 
11 rebounds and two blocks, shooting 49% from the floor and 32.5% from deep on 40 attempts from out there. As we've seen in the summer league, Achua's combination of mobility and length allows him to guard positions one through five. A former Raptor I'd relate Achua to is Serge Ibaka. Offensively, he's a threat in the pick and roll with his soft touch around the basket, but the other end is where he makes his living. In my opinion, Precious has the potential to be one of the better rim protectors in basketball. What makes Achua so intriguing as a prospect is the potential shot creating off the dribble and spot up threes he could develop. I had him as a lottery pick in my predictions for last year's draft, and I was pretty shocked when the Nigerian fell to the heat down at pick number 20. Eric Spolstra gave him 12 minutes per game, but he couldn't properly develop his game playing on a team with title expectations, going from a contender on the heat to a team whose goals are to sneak into the playoffs for the Raptors, that'll be a much better situation for Precious. The man's thrown down some insane posters this summer and looks ready to fill the role as Toronto's starting center. Moving on to Malachi Flynn, who's just one of many late round gems for the Raptors front office. Looking to make a big time leap in year two, the 29th pick from last year's draft has phenomenal range and shooting touch off the bounce. Flynn couldn't earn consistent minutes behind k -Low and Freddie in his rookie year, but the backup PG slot is now open for Malachi to thrive in. His speed with the ball is tremendous. He can create in the pick and roll at a very high level, and his feel for the flow of the offense has shown flashes of brilliance. Last year, he owned LaMelo Ball in the preseason, but generally struggled to take advantage of the limited minutes he was given. With Lowry taking his talents to South Beach, Malachi has all the minutes he needs to develop into an efficient sixth man. The 22-year-old Gary Trent Jr. dropped a 44-piece on 17-for-19 shooting against the Cavaliers after Toronto got him back in the Norman Powell trade. Recently, Gary signed a three-year, $51 million extension to return to the six. He posted six games of scoring at least 23 points, and while he struggled with his efficiency throughout his career, the kids only entering his fourth pro season, he's got tons of time to make his scoring elite. Trent Jr. did shoot a solid 38.5% from deep last year and shot 42% over 61 games for the Blazers back in 2019-20. But y'all, I saved the most intriguing Raptor prospect for last. OG Ananobi's fifth NBA season is going to be crucial for the Raptors. In my eight breakout player prediction video, the comments were filled with people vowing for Ananobi, and rightfully so. I could have put him on there, but he didn't make my list because of two things. Firstly, OG's already known as one of the best defenders in the league, so in that aspect, there's nothing for him to break out into. And second of all, OG makes steady progression from year to year, which is impressive but doesn't classify as breaking out. OG has to stay healthy, but I see him averaging around 17 to 19 points per game this season. In his five-year career, Ananobi's annually increased his scoring, and it's weird to think that my projected scoring for him would only be an increase of two points per game from the prior season. The playmaking of Scotty Barnes should benefit OG. Given OG's a tremendous cutter and Scotty's a tremendous passer, I'm looking forward to seeing how those two mesh. Overall, the growth of this Toronto team is going to be a process, but comparing them to teams in their conference who are in the same tier of development, and they stack up pretty well. I want to make a separate video on Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, Isaiah Stewart, and Jerry and Grant for the Pistons, but other than that, I may take the Raps young talent over any other team. The Cavaliers with Sexton, Garland, Okoro, and now Evan Mobley are no joke. The Hornets with Mello, Bridges, PJ Washington, and now James Booknight plus Kai Jones are solid too. But the Raptors with OG, Barnes, Trent Jr., Achua, and Flynn are right there with those young cores. Not to mention Siakam's no old man either. The man's in the prime of his career at age 27. Same with Freddie V, he's 27 as well. Chris Boucher's 28, but he's an improving player as well. The Raptors aren't close to being top East contenders. That could take one to three years. But for now, their future is set up to be as good as any team in the league. 
bright things are ahead for Raptor fans. I'm trying to get to know my audience, so follow me on Instagram at Hoops for highlights, polls, and more. Links in the description. Hope you have a great day, y'all. You're the best for sticking around. Dflow signing off.